Hello internet people and welcome to The Broken Seal. I'm Jared and today we're going to be looking at Katara, a new game by Elio. Um, I should say I'm very excited about this game, uh, primarily because of the concept of being a uh, fantasy afro setting. And even if it is just meeples, the artwork is really beautiful. So uh, we're going to go over setup and actual how to play because the game is actually quite simple to both set up and play. Um, however, the game has more complexity as you go to actually figure out how to play it. So let's dive on it. So first, we're going to find the game board that matches the number of players you're going to play with. The game boards are double sided except for the two player game board, which only has two players. The symbol in the bottom left will tell you how many players the game board is for. In this instance, it's two. We're going to show setup for a two player game and then go forward from there. Once you have the correct board game for the number of players, you're going to find a kingdom sheet for each player. Each kingdom sheet is similar. You're just going to pick one that basically is the either your favorite color or your favorite artwork. In this instance, we're going to use green and orange or yellow, I guess, if you want to call it that. Once you have the game boards figured out, you're going to decide a player to randomly go first. You can flip a coin, play rock, paper, scissors. We're probably going to play rock, paper, scissors. We'll say the green went first this time. Next, each player is going to take their markers and their meeples and set them aside in piles near them. Everything is easy to find because it's color coded. So for this example, we're going to find all of the green warriors and yellow warriors, all of the green and yellow master animals, and all of the green and yellow champions. In addition, we're going to find the green and yellow prosperity markers, start them off on zero, and the green and yellow movement trackers, and put them near the board. In your next step, you're going to want to identify which deck you're going to play with. There are two kingdom decks, red and blue. The game doesn't actually specify which one to start with, so I don't really feel like there's a beginner and an expert mode, but the red kingdom deck does include a feed track, which is another level of complexity. So we're going to start off with blue. Take the blue and separate them based off of the age at the bottom. Once you find all of them, separate them into piles. The zero age cards are for starting. Give each player a zero age card and place it to the right of the board. Then starting from highest to lowest, you're going to set the decks up by their age, shuffle them together. And then five would be on the bottom, working your way up to one. Next, you're going to take the cloth bag that was supplied in the game and place all of the hero tokens inside the bag. The hero tokens have random numbers on the back, which allow for different point values during the game when you collect them. Put this in easy reach of everyone. Now that we have all this set up, we're going to place six of the kingdom cards along the top of the game. And that's set up. Everything's complete and we're ready to play. Now let's move on to gameplay. So when you start the game, you're going to find three of your meeples and place them in any of the starting areas. In a two player game, there's one on the top left and bottom right. Now let's go on to gameplay. Once you have everything set up, you're gonna take your turn doing five different actions. Drafting, recruiting, moving, scoring, and then management. On your draft turn, you're gonna take one of the cards in the top row. If you have cards in your draft row, each symbol allows you to pick one from the left over. So in this instance, we have two. That means that we could pull either the first or the second card from the row. So let's say we're going to take the second. We draft the second and add it to our kingdom card. Once we've drafted, we slide everything to the left and then draw a new card to replace the one that we just drew. After drafting, we recruit. Seeing the number of symbols on the card that we just drew allows us to place new characters down to the board. In this instance, we didn't have any, 
so we can't place any new meeples. Next, we move. Using our move tracker, we're going to move for each symbol that's listed on our character cards. We're going to move for each symbol that's in our kingdom cards. Each time you move, slide it to the right. Once there are no more movements, that's it. You can move as many or as little meeples as you want, but you cannot move into another space if that would trigger an attack, which we'll cover next. Some things to note, all pawns that are moving must move across the same white border from one space to one adjacent space. Pawns may never cross from a black border, for instance, the lakes. Pawns may make multiple moves in the same turn, or different groups can be moved with different move actions or a combination of the two. It's entirely up to the player. Your pawns may only move into a space occupied by another player's pawns if you're able to attack. You must complete each move action before starting another, and it's not necessary to move all the pawns in a space. You may move some and leave others behind. This can be beneficial if you don't have enough to manage later on, which we'll explain later on. An example of attacking would be if I were to try and move into a space that had more characters in the space than I had. In this instance, if I wanted to move to the right and there were four in this space, I wouldn't be able to move there because I only have three. If, however, there are only two in that space, I could move my three into the two and then I would win automatically forcing the yellow player to retreat to another area. When a player has to retreat, they must move all of their pawns that were in the attack space to the next closest white space that bordered that space that they were in. It is possible to move through another space that has meeples in it. For instance, let's say if I had a green one there, yellow could retreat from here to the, uh, to the forest without triggering another attack. Once you finish your movement, you go on to scoring. The fourth row will have any scores that your kingdom cards offer. In this instance, the card that we just drafted had one score symbol. This allows us to move one on the prosperity track. If you have a master animal, which I like to call cheetars, you get one space for each ruin that they occupy at the end of a round. Ruins are marked by the green forested areas. Savannas are the empty areas. Lake spaces are the blue lakes. Once you score, you go on to manage your kingdom. Each card in your kingdom represents people who must be fed. If the card is not fed, the people get angry and they leave your kingdom. Each savanna space that you occupy, with at least one of your meeples, so in this instance we only have one, lets you keep one card at the end of your turn. Determine the total number of cards that you can feed, so one, and if you have more cards than you can feed in your kingdom, then you must discard cards until your kingdom only has the number of cards that you can feed. So because this card doesn't give us many opportunities, we're going to discard this one and end our turn. One thing to note, in a two-player game, after both players have gone, you take the leftmost card, discard it, shift all the cards over, and then draw the next card. Once you've completed your turn, the player on the left goes, and you're going to keep going until you draw the first 5th age card. Once the first 5th age card is revealed, players then take one final turn, and that's it. After you've completed all of your turns, the game ends and final scoring begins. During final scoring, you add up all of the hero tokens and reveal them, moving along the prosperity track for each token. Then, each player gains 2 prosperity for each card that's still in their kingdom, and then the player with the most prosperity wins the game. That's everything you need to know how to play, so let's get to it.